Hey guys, it's Liv. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I edit my Instagram food pictures. So I actually get a ton of questions from people and direct messages from people asking like how I edit my food pictures and what filters I use and all of that. So I'm going to talk about that today. The app I use that I'm pretty sure everyone uses is ViscoCam, so this one right here. And I pretty much do the same techniques every time. Okay, so let's say that I'm editing this picture. So what I do, oops, okay, so we have the picture that we want. And so my approach for pictures is I like them all to have cooler tones rather than warmer tones. So. If you scroll through my feed, you'll see like everything has like a fairly cool tone to it. And that's just like a personal preference thing. And I actually read somewhere that um, accounts with warmer tones get like more likes and more follows than other ones. But I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. So you want to click on this little thing and up first is all of the filters. So you can see I have a lot more filters than it actually comes with. And that's because I downloaded them. I actually stay away from like from K to X, I don't really use any of those ones. Um, the ones that I do use pretty much every time is the HBs, so those ones, and then the A's. If I was editing this, I would go through and I'd say A4. Okay, no, that makes it look like it looks cool, but it's too yellowy brown. A5, that one looks nice. It's got like, you know, the cooler tones. And then there's A6 which gives everything like a much warmer tone, which you can definitely fix. So if you like the way that A6 makes it look, then you can choose that. Um, and then if I don't like those, then I'll go over to HB1. I really like how HB1 makes this picture look because, yeah, I don't know. It just, I like how things are popping off the background, like it makes the background a little bit lighter. Or you can go to HB2, which makes it a bit warmer and makes there be more contrast. So let's say I pick HB1 for this. And I go up to the little wrench thing icon. And so you can adjust the exposure however much you want. I usually don't turn up the exposure too much because the more you put the exposure up, then the more like grainy and processed it looks. So I usually keep the exposure the same unless it's too bright, which in this case, like putting it down a notch for exposure makes everything look less like glaring, I find. Um, but I definitely wouldn't put the exposure up for this picture, so put the exposure down one. I'm just kind of taking you through the process of like how I think when I edit pictures. I hope it's helpful. <laughs> for contrast, you can either do like less contrast where everything kind of looks one tone, or you can do really super heavy contrast which everything looks like really stark and glaring and I really don't like high contrast. For this I would keep the contrast maybe down one but I definitely wouldn't put it up any higher just because like there's the black plate and then the really bright fruit and the light background and I, I think the contrast is enough just with that by itself. And then you can crop the picture if you need to. So um, I think 3-4 is the size that Instagram allows so you can put it on 3-4 and then crop it like that. The next one is sharpness. Again, if you put the sharpness up too much, it can really look like grainy and super processed. Like you can tell something's been done to the photo. So I don't usually touch sharpness a lot. You could maybe turn it up a bit so that you can see, like you can tell the strawberries, like you can see the seeds better, but I don't know. I think like if you're this far back, you shouldn't be able to see the seeds that well. Does that make sense? So saturation is one that I actually use a lot either up or down because saturation is what can either like bring a photo to life or tone it down if it's like way too much. So for saturation, I'll usually put it up just because when you don't have professional lighting and you're not a professional photographer, then sometimes your pictures can look kind of like washed out. So I don't think that I need to touch the saturation too much for this photo, but for some photos where it, like it, they might be a little bit washed out or if the light was too bright, then I'll put the saturation up. So yeah, I could put the saturation up like one for this. Then the highlights and shadows save. So basically this will tone down your highlights. So 
if you have some pretty like intense highlights in your picture you can use this but for this one I don't really need to and then this is just shadow save so if you have shadows it will brighten them up like that sometimes I use shadow save if like for example here it's kind of hard to see the chocolate chips on the plate so I might put it up to two and then you can see them better temperature is what I was talking about I think I might have called it like tint or tone before but temperature when I said I like it to have more cool tones this is how I do it so with the temperature you can either put it up to warm colors so it will be like a yellow tone or you can put it all the way down to blue colors which is the blue and purple tones as you can probably tell when you look through my photos I put the temperature down a lot and that's just because I like the look of it you can just tell like the photo changes so much depending on what temperature you put it at so if I put it down to one then you can definitely see it starting to look more like the pictures I usually post and then also tint is one where if you turn it up it goes purple and if you turn it down it goes green so if you have a photo of like a green smoothie or like a green landscape definitely if you want to make the green like really pop you can put the tint down because as you can see like the plant colors really pop when I put it down to the green tint but it also gives everything a greener tint which I don't actually think it looks that bad here but I mean you wouldn't want to overdo it and then these things at the end so there's a skin tone I don't really use that because I don't do a lot of pictures of myself there's fade so if you put fade up it kind of gives it a faded look obviously but it gives it more of like an old school almost like film camera type of feel and then shadows tint basically is like wherever it would have if you use the shadow save option wherever it would have toned down the shadows this actually tints them a specific color and then you can also click on it again and like tone it down a bit if you want and just save it to your camera roll when you're done and I'll do one more picture just taking you through I'll try and pick a different one and show you how I would do it I have a picture of my friend's broken toe so let's say this banana bread picture I'll just take you through, I guess, what I would do. So I check the A filters to see which one I like. A6 looks nice. Um, and then HB1 and HB2. So HB1 actually looks really good with this one, I think. So I think I would put the exposure down for this one. Just to... I don't need to justify it. I'm just going to put the exposure down. <laughs> and then... I would put the saturation up one for this, but I mean, just to make things look a little bit more lifelike because sometimes the filters can make it look a bit dull. So put the saturation up once, and then usually I'll just skip right to temperature, put it down one, put it down two, put it down three. I actually like it at three, so we'll keep it there. Um, I don't think I want to do anything else. So yeah, that's kind of how I edit my photos. I like a more like cooler, rustic, um, but still kind of modern look to my pictures. I think filtering your pictures and editing them is a really good thing to do just because it kind of can give your feed a very cohesive look. It can kind of take it to the next level I feel. So I'll just show you another couple like editing things if you want to use. Um, before I got my DSLR camera I actually used this Tada SLR app. I'm pretty sure it's free, but if it's not, it's only like a dollar. Let's say I'm doing this photo and I want to make the background more blurred. You can go to mask and then I turn off edges because I don't know how to use that. And you basically just put a mask over, this is not going to be done well, over the thing that you want um, to be not blurry. So you're just going to go around the edges pretend that I'm doing this well. I've literally taken like 20 minutes doing this before before I got my good camera, but it was worth it. So you're gonna do that and then you can like zoom in really big and like do the straw like that. And then you go to next and it's going to blur. <laughs> I did that so badly, but it's going to blur whatever you didn't um, mask. So you can see if I did this better it would look better but you can see where it is um, blurring so if you press circular then you can see where that curved line is that's gonna remain um, not blurred because it would look kind of weird if it, your smoothie was like floating in a blurry thing so this just makes it look more natural but yeah so 
I wouldn't say to put it too blurry like you wouldn't want to like make it blurred like that because that just looks fake but if you put it a little bit like it can just give your photo a better depth perception or whatever you would call that and yeah so that's another really cool app um and then the only other app that I really use is Moldiv, Moldiv. And honestly, I only use this to mirror my photos. If I have a photo that's like facing this way and I want it to be facing that way, then I'll use Moldiv to do that. So yeah, that's how I edit my pictures. I hope this was helpful. And if you like this video or you want more videos about like how to take food pictures or style food or whatever. I'm not obviously a professional or I'm not even that good at it, but I can tell you what I do. Leave a comment below if you want to see any other videos or if you have any other ideas of videos that I could film. And that's everything for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you next time. Oh!